This is my wish book. A lot of people have a wish book. You can tell me how many wishes I've been making, how many things I'd like to have. Uh, of course, they're all of it. All of it's needed for my little projects. Uh, yep. And I mean, some little simple things like. Uh, Steel stamping set, uh, got numbers and letters. So I ordered the 1 8 inch numbers and 1 8 inch letters. And that's, that's right here. So when I, uh, on the first stealth bot that I make for sale, it'll be, it'll be marked, uh, stamped into it somewhere, stealth bot. Uh, zero 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 four. I know that that may be wishful thinking to put that many zeros in front of a four, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, is that may be coming up pretty soon. And a couple other things I've been needing that uh, I went ahead and splurged on. And not really a splurge, it's an investment because uh, this is the type of cutoff tool that I have right now. And this is great for cutting aluminum, but when you're cutting stainless steel, uh, two inch diameter, the stainless steel I'm trying to cut is almost as hard as the cutter itself, so it chatters and bounces, and, and it is just a hair below center. If I, if I carried it all the way to the center, you would see just a, a size of a hair sticking out. So it's just a little bit below center. So that's not the problem. Yet. So I have uh, went ahead and ordered the parting, parting tool with carbide inserts, which is this rascal right here. And it just came in today. Uh, so I'll be able to cut that, cut another piece I have to make uh, have to make a new shaft to fit this. I've only got two shafts, and both of them are in use right now. I've got uh, those right there, so I need a third one, and then I'll need a fourth one after that. But I don't I don't only have three generators, so I want to put all three of them to use and and uh, see what I can do. That's the one I wanted, but uh, 99 bucks would be 100, over $100 for that in the inserts as well. And all kinds of little benders and stuff I'd like to have for other little things. Uh, safety bifocals. So I, I need reading glasses when I'm working or seeing up close. So I ordered some safety bifocals, which is that right there. I'm looking forward to giving that a shot. It's, it's, it's nice to be able to see while you're being safe. And one of the, the big things on my wish list is a, a Fox and Pan break. I really need one. I need a good one. Is, uh, there we go. Yeah, they've got uh, some good choices on box and pan break. That, that rascal's 81 inches wide. That would uh, bend any length turbine that blade that I need to do. And the taller I could make them, the more air they're going to catch. That's a fact. But uh, that thing's $4,000. That's just not in my budget. Not at all. And this one's pretty nice too. It's uh, seventeen hundred dollars. It's a fifty-inch box and pan brake. That would do just about anything I needed to do, but that's a little out of my budget as well. Um, and here's the forty-two-inch swivel and bending brake. Box and pan brake. It's got the uh, little fingers you can 
make it any length you need it to be. That would be great. That's that's a thousand bucks. Oh, well, finally broke down, and I bought a vice break. <laughs> vice break. That is the four inch vice break. It's twenty five dollars and fifty cents. That's going to help me do uh, do those short bends that I complained so much about when I was bending on the edge of my bench here. That works with my vise. Now, I may uh, get a, a vise that's especially for that so I can dedicate it. Maybe a, uh, another one of my wants with it here. Oh, here we go. There's a bunch of different vices here, but there's a quick release drill press vise. So get it close and then push and, and until I'm thinking maybe that would work with that. So just push it up and, and inch it closer together and do the bending and then pull it back. I don't know. Maybe not. That's a thought. Anyway, my wish was... It's a 100% chance of thunderstorms tonight. Uh, wind gust up to 40 miles per hour. Didn't hit a whole lot, I guess. Uh, but I had just finished setting up turbines on the roof of my little shop. The left side is the wind blue and the right side is the Freedom PMG. Still no battery system yet, nothing to charge. It'll be a whole lot of uh, created and wasted power, but at least I'll find out whether my uh, little stands will hold them on the roof or if they will blow down and crash into little bitty pieces so hopefully it'll hold fine well we will we will find out tomorrow well, they survived it is kind of breezy today i like i like watching this thing spin uh, Now, run the wires inside from these two. I plan. Whoop, can't see. I plan to um, hook up the other, uh, the Freedom too. Made a little little heat sink for it. It's kind of a crappy little thing, but it's just scrap aluminum. Um, getting some pretty good. Always getting more out of the. Uh, Freedom PMG than I will out of the wind blue. Wind blue just doesn't have that power. Um, I know one thing on the uh, on the bot style. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There you go. On the bot style turbine, um, you don't ever want to use a brake. Uh, a brake could actually break the turbine. So the idea is you just let it uh, let it free spin in, in very high winds if you don't need the power that it makes let it free spin so what i'm going to have to do we're back inside okay where the where my wires come in from outside where the turbines are i'm going to have to put another another little board up here with the switches to each one not a break but to open it you just open the circuit and let them free spin
I'll skin it down. Uh, I'll skin it down before I cut it off completely. Uh, I like to have it out here where it's easy to work on before I get it way up there in the chuck and do the facing on it. Uh, but it's going to fit inside this tube. I don't want a nice snug fit when I get to this point. I'll probably have to clean that up just a little bit on the inside and make it nice and nice and round on the inside. Make this well, you know what I'm talking about. I'll get back with you later. Two-inch uh, aluminum tube is just a little bit oversized. So I've got to skin it down just a little bit so it'll go through the uh, collar. It's gonna take a little while. I'm making three. Um, yeah, this one is another one that's oversized just a little bit. Uh, it's oversized on the inside too. I had to. Uh, Shape it down a bit on the inside. And this one's pretty pretty close, but this is a more expensive material. So it's more closely calibrated. So. But you gotta pay for that. Whereas these things are like 40 bucks a piece, and this was uh, a 48 inch piece for like $15. So you get what you pay for, and then you've got to work on it. Uh, so I gave you a little looky loo. See what's going on now. Something else I'm going to have to buy pretty soon is hearing protection. Although this is not loud enough, it really hurt me, but um, it is very annoying. Oh, I don't like the sound at all. And if I could, I'd just walk away and let it run. But, uh, can't leave a machine unattended. You got to be nearby it so you can take care of any problem that may pop up. So, I don't like that at all. My uh, nut almost ready. I've still got to got to set up the mill to drill three holes that'll go three equally spaced holes, and uh, those will line up. I try not to hit the threads when I do those holes. So. But that's the nut right there. Um, it's kind of flush or near flush with the end of the shaft there. Let's see if I can pull it back out. And it's a little bit tighter in here than I really like it to be, but a nice snug fit is pretty good. Uh, it's aluminum tube, stainless steel nut, and so I still got to drill the hole there, but I, I thought I might try and uh, explain a little bit better why I'm not real fond of the using the um, Delco body for the the Vought type situation. I mean this is this is the back of a of a Delco. This isn't exactly what folks use for the uh, for the Delcos because this is just a little bit bigger than the, the ones that are common for wind power. But if you see the back there, that is the um, needle bearings, and they sit in a cup. So as far as bearings go all that does is keep the end of the shaft centered so you have your uh, it, see it it'll keep it centered but the entire weight of this is resting on the back of that cup which means it's not really touching a bearing bearing whereas the um, the front bearing is like a thrust bearing it will hold 
hold pressure this way or that way uh, and turn at the same time and it's held in place by this little retainer plate um, if you have the front the retainer plates bolted in on these in the inside that little hole right here get, the, get out of there and that's that sits in in there so that this retainer plate holds that bearing against the housing and that retainer plate is the only thing that would be holding the weight of watt in this this configuration I don't really like the idea of using the Delco body for any kind of wind turbine but people do it and that's fine Voice over alert. Voice over alert. Here's an update. I have seen an acceptable way to use an AC Delco PMA. A fellow in Ireland built a frame to accommodate a drive shaft which allows the PMA to be pulley driven at a 4 to 1 ratio. Yep, looks like uh, just about got it. There's the new nut, uh, complete with the holes that match the shaft. And Put a little uh, marker on there to try and help the alignment. Try and put it back exactly like it came off. Ooh, that's got a little burr on it. I don't like that. I'm not quite ready then. Burr around the hole is not that bad. Not that big a deal. It just make it harder to pull it apart next time if I ever needed to. Mm. Hammer, hammer, hammer. There we go. Well, it's a whole lot tighter than I usually like it to, but... At least it won't move around a whole lot. This one isn't getting the stamp. Stealth bot 0004 yet, because this is the third one. This was an unintentional uh, third piece. I've got two two new center tubes right there, so that'll go on the next two that I build. Um, Snug it down. down. There's my tube. And it goes on to the new, uh, or the previously, I had it already. But that's the uh, Freedom 2. And just look at that. So now I gotta make some little little spacers. I've gotta re-weld that, I don't like it at all. I've got a neighbor who can weld a lot better than me and when I build one to sell, uh, I'll have him weld it together.
Yeah, this one is going to be yeah, back up, back up. This one is going to be in my in my business. I have a brick and mortar business. The newsstand business is dying out because of the uh, internet is just making this obsolete. So we'll be changing our business and this is kind of what I had in mind. Uh, although I do do have a little ways to go before I can devote all my energies into that. We do have to prove what it can do under a load and that'll be the next step. But uh, uh, it's, just, it's just so pretty sitting there on top of that uh, Freedom 2. Who'd have thunk it?